Good afternoon. Today is the 24th day of January 2016. And we are continuing <coughs> with our series, Explorations in Savitri. Still on Canto 4, The Kingdoms of the Little Life, and I believe we'll be there for a while. Yes. <laughs> uh, as always, it is an honor to be with Alok. We ended yesterday with quotes from Nirod Baran, I am here, I am here. And the last thing was on everybody's lips was the <coughs> eager question, how far Savitri? But Savitri was not his sole occupation. Savitri alone which was the preoccupation nearest to his heart, will one day fire the imagination of the world by its sheer bulk and beauty of profound images, vivid words, felicitous and daring expressions, <coughs> every detail of which he took sculptor-like pains to develop. The first book itself went through 10 revisions and had he been able to maintain the same godlike labor throughout, or had he not been compelled to lean on the support of a weak <coughs> and at times unwilling assistant required to keep pace with his divine energy, Savitri would have seen the light of day before <coughs> his own life's light had withdrawn. But alas, this was not to be. We will continue in our next evening, which will be Thursday, this coming Thursday. Yes. So we're on page 140. Here, of course, Niroda is referring to the fact that Savitri was printed in two parts. And the first came out in 1950, which was part one, which contained book one, two, three. Which Sri Aurobindo actually proofread. Yes. Now, it's very interesting also because if you see closely book one, two, three, book three is the book of the Divine Mother and it ends with, you know, the vision and the boon. So, Sri own part of the story. Yes. And he saw and proofread before as Niroda puts it, like physically he withdrew. But the next part, which is the mother's side of the story, and the rest of it came in 1951. So Savitri was yes. published in two parts, 50 and 51. 50 and 51. <clears throat> which Niroda is referring to. Now, you know, we are on a very interesting subject, and Shurabindo only can make such a thing like uh, little life so interesting. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, we we have a you know there are se several categories of vision that we can experience. One of course we all know familiar with the most material vision. So we look at objects materially and we can augment it with the microscope or telescope etc. But it's essentially a material vision. It looks at the surfaces of things. Then there is still deeper subtle vision which yogis begin to develop. And they can see the occult phenomenon, the occult forces at play, and so on and so forth. A third level is the spiritual vision, which a person who has become one with the self sees. He sees the self everywhere, the self in all beings. It's a profound vision. One may uh, be a seer of the self and yet not have the you know occult vision. The two need not go together. And one may have the occult vision and not yet the be a seer of the self. So all possibilities are there. But beyond all these, there is the divine vision. Whether we, we may call it the supramental vision, if you like. And in that vision, all these are seen together. Not only together, but also in their interconnectedness in terms of space and interconnectedness in terms of time. This is the supramental vision. It is very difficult to express it in words. That's why the mother says that human language and human consciousness is not yet evolved to express the supramental state. 
because you see the three movements of time several places here in savitri even in this canto y yes we are actually yes. seeing the three spaces of time come together when shobhind is describing the cell he is also describing the future he is also describing the past and how it is existing in the cell it is actually a vision which is called in india as trikal drishti very often people confuse this you know triple time vision or the trikal drishti to mean that the person is a soothsayer he predicts about what's going to happen after few years in your life and what happened you know a few years in your past that is not trikal drishti that's only a very brief kind mm. of clairvoyance if you like mm. but trikal drishti is very different it sees how from the origin of time and takes you right up to its ultimate culmination and all this compressed in a single moment shobindo's one of those innocent poems on kiki the cat contains this it's amazing and uh, very often the poem is quoted semi humorously that you know it's on kiki the cat but what does shobindo write he says toward the end at one one of the lines he says mystery of the miracle of the fur footed brahman he is actually seeing brahman become a cat now look this vision contains all this together then he says something very interesting whether she is a spirit a woman or a cat this is the mystery i am wondering at because he is seeing all these three together she is a spirit so what if she is a cat she is a woman going to be in the future and mother did confirm mother it. did confirm when it, kiki yes. left she used to go into trances yeah. sometimes sitting on uh, you know on chair next to mother on a footstool sometimes on shurbindo's chair and when shurbindo would come he would never never you know even as much as indicate that you know he it's his chair he would quietly sit on the edge of the chair yet to see masters like that who would quietly sit on the edge of the chair because a little cat is you know sleeping there but mother said she was ready for human birth. ready for human birth and then she would go into trances and then when she left the body shobindo himself came down shobindo and the mother and he would also uh, take out the you know those things from the fish and feed the cat and he has also cryptically remarked about it how supramental consciousness acts and he says when i take out you know the flesh of the fish and leave i leave out the bone and i give it to the fish to an outward vision it will look okay he is just feeding the fish somebody the cat, cat the and cat. somebody may even say oh he was attached to a cat but he says it's for a totally different reason now i am sure shubindo was not feeding the cat only fish but something else yeah. and when she took a human birth mother testified that that kiki has already taken a human birth it's a woman but a very early stage very early primitive you know beginnings of human life now shubindo sees all this compressed in a single moment and he says whether she is a spirit a woman or a cat so this is one part of it second is when we understand human life and its problems we understand it depending on the vision so material vision will be that it's a material problem occult vision will be it's an occult problem spiritual vision is that it's a problem of ignorance awaken but how does the divine vision see it shobindo says in one of his writings toward the end 1949 the problem is dual corporeal and psychological so problem is not just in the inner being all who have tried to correct humanity has looked at oh this is a problem of character moral problem humanity is suffering from moral problem sometimes moral indigestion which is very dangerous and sometimes <laughs> the other thing moral depravity <clears throat> moral poverty and then the solutions are make human beings morally strong by cultivating the sattvic nature but we know how fragile sattvic nature is in mahabharata yudhishthira who is such a paragon of virtues never speaks a lie ends up putting on the dice his kingdom his brothers and even his wife not realizing what he is doing and shubindo quotes this example to say that 
even a most cultured sattvic man this is not perfection so where is the problem the problem is cellular and what is the solution the solution is supramental so this is the beauty and we see now how beautifully stating the problem <clears throat> although on earth are firm established lives <laughs> this is how we think a working of habit or a sense of law a steady repetition in the flux what we call as firm established lives now here there is a very subtle gentle irony although on earth are firm established lives that's how we look at ourselves what is it habit flux yes. or a law under which we labor but we don't realize it and a repetition no less a repetition <laughs> so here there is a steady repetition in the flux yet are its roots of will ever the same mm. that's why at one place you know we are often disgusted by so called sin in humanity and shubindo says there are only two things which are unpardonable they look like unpardonable and he says that meanness and selfishness two sins and then he says yet these two are uni these are universal hence these two must be pardoned <laughs> roots are ever the same two sins meanness and selfishness and then he says and yet these are universal therefore these two must be pardoned so roots of will are ever the same where is that you know these passions are the stuff of which we are made once niruddha told him that i am having this boil and so there was a lot of humorous banter mm. shurbindo gave him okay you repeat this mantra first he sent a rhyme oh blessed blessed boil within my nostril oh how does thou make my boss trill so it was paining so shubindo said oh please chant this mantra om tat atat tat atat t u t so it's not tat tat is t a t so niruddha writes to him next day i tried it sir but it didn't work <laughs> i mean he took it very seriously so shubindo further continues he doesn't say that you know you took this seriously he said oh you i didn't tell you what is the way to chant it he says you have to call four brahmins who don't have a pot belly and are free of sex thoughts in the mind now look you know how <laughs> shirobindo in humor is taking such a dig at human nature <laughs> that it's <laughs> brahmins think they are very superior because they are born of a high caste and those days now of course everything is level but those days to cut a joke on brahmin i mean if there are people walking nearby who were so called you know not belonging to that caste you are not allowed you can't touch you can't come near and he says call those brahmin where are those brahmins four no less four <laughs> who don't have a pot belly and are free of sex thoughts so it's his way of saying to niruddha that you know it's universal human nature and then of course he tells him that how to do it <laughs> so that's the other part so roots are ever the same these passions are the stuff of which we are made this was the first cry of the awakening world where did they come from they have not come today it's not this man that person they came when out of matter and mud life awoke first cry so that first cry continues to linger in in the cells it clings around us still and clamps the god even actually the gods are subject to it and within us the emerging god it clamps it draws us back again and again even when reason is born and soul takes form in beast and reptile and in thinking man it lasts and is the fount of all their life even in thinking man it lasts do what you may it is there in the very cells that's what today your i had got this little thing from agenda where mother says fear it's in the very cells fear of death you know you can intellectually argue everything but it's there in the very cells the problem is cellular that's why you see went into all the cellular yoga because without this there is no real possibility of divine life on earth you can at the most have a very beautiful inner being 
which is of course countless times it has been tried but the moment you take a material sheath you take all these issues so here it is and he ends that with a period and then the next line is also a period yes full stop yes this too was needed that breath and living might be ah. it had its purpose yes that was the origin this spirit in a finite ignorant world must rescue so its prisoned consciousness forced out in little jets at quivering points from the inconscious sealed infinitude so when a king is in prison he has to start with obeying the most menial of the jailers is to first start please them that's how people get out of the prison then when they are confident then they say okay you are allowed this much freedom slowly slowly he can't stay away he assert his kingliness they will say all right you labor forever so slowly 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 consciousness develops like a child who begins to walk starts with first stumbling step falls but the same child may develop into a you know a great climber mountain climber let's work jets shri arbin yes more than jets yes. yes because these impulses in the animal world and the human world yes they are literally like pricks jets and suddenly they that's why they can even sway the mind of the sage that's how the gita puts it because they come like a jet now jet is something which is sudden and it flows and hits you and it's like a powerful jet is literally mm. a powerful yes. energy which suddenly comes yes. and then it dies down yes. so these are jets <clears throat> then slowly it gathers mass looks up at light this nature lives tied to her origin a clutch of nether force is on her still out of unconscious depths her instincts sleep a neighbor is a life to insentient not under this law an ignorant world was made so it is this is the problem so we can take the question to the next level but who created the problem why this has happened why this was allowed so see the simultaneity of the vision it's only in expression that you have to express successively that's what the mother says that you know this is a big problem that when you express the supramental vision you are forced to express it successively so we see the next level of expression but all this is a simultaneous vision and what is this vision in the enigma of the dark and vast in the passion and self loss of the infinite when all was plunged in the negating void non beings night could never have been saved if being had not plunged into the dark carrying with it its triple mystic cross yeah let's talk about that mystic yeah, we'll cross we'll talk he, in fact he, he explains it in the next three lines so the thing is that if there was no soul if everything was mechanical there was no problem <laughs> material energy playing with material energy mm. the problem is along with this material energy these roots there is also the soul element that creates the issue if there was only matter and nature playing within itself it's all right but because of the presence of the psychic element as we have read that you know we are uh, stung by the infinite within and that goads us the soul leaps out at transient things this is the problem so why this divine went into this it is saying to rescue nature to rescue matter out of its plunge into inconscience being with the capital b yes and that it speaks about the triple mystic cross as we know we have cross of course is the very famous christian symbol and mother at one place says that it was adopted later on obviously christ himself never used a cross he was you know but the cross is a symbol which was adopted and there are two ways that shobindra has described it one is the it's like the transcendent the universal and the individual so yes. these three together yes. and the transcendent entering into the universal and the individual now he has to bear not just he cannot remain only there yeah. 
he has entered into the play of the universe and he has further entered into the individual atomic existence and you know sentient life and life of bird and beast and stone so he is there now the moment that transcendent is here he cannot avoid the responsibility and this this is he why he plunged into it so that he can rescue it so it applies to christ because christ brought the divine love upon earth and himself bore the burden of humanity that's how he said that you know uh, i have washed away the sins of others with my blood there is a deep mystic truth in it but a truth which is badly misrepresented when we say that well just because i am baptized i am free yeah. that is obviously absurd but if we truly believe when mother speaks about it she says if you simply have faith about the divine sacrifice in matter this she describes about the future world she says that who will be saved those who are open to the new forces etc then she says that well it's not easy for human beings she says to give you hope and courage i must tell you that there are those who are endowed with faith faith in the divine sacrifice into matter the divine has sacrificed himself into matter by this power of faith alone they will be saved she has used this but she has put it in the right perspective if you have that faith that the divine has plunged into matter he is carrying it rescuing it what is called as the avatar in india then that faith itself is such a powerful lever that it augments the action of the divine which is active in the material universe so this is the symbol of the cross the divine with this cross plunging into darkness unconsciousness then why triple so here he says the three aspects of the divine which have plunged into it so it becomes the triple mystic cross invoking in world time the timeless truth bliss changes to sorrow the first cross the all blissful chose to become insensible take the burden of suffering bliss changes to sorrow knowledge made ignorant the all knowing chose to become ignorant laboring struggling god's force turned into a child's helplessness god's force is there in the stone turned into a child's helplessness can bring down heaven by their sacrifice so this is the triple we see and of course mother speaks about it later on she speaks of the four beings but it's the same thing shobindo at another place also speaks about four but by and large the fourfold being but many places we see this reference to three bliss knowledge and force and this is because in the indian tradition we speak about sachidananda so ananda is bliss sat is truth or pure existence true existence and consciousness is force power energy so the sachidananda becomes what he becomes matter life and mind the insensible so this is the triple mystic cross the being has plunged into this darkness so that here he can establish the timeless invoking truth. in world time yes. the timeless, timeless truth. truth and therefore a contradiction founds the base of life the eternal the divine reality has faced itself with its own contraries he is the one who is facing all this we think we are but deep inside krishna says this mystic truth same thing in bible i have taken upon myself the sins of humanity krishna says this in mahabharata he says when humanity suffers when creation suffers i take that suffering on to myself eventually that's where the buck stops the last so we see this the eternal the divine reality has faced itself with its own contraries being became the void and conscious force nescience and walk of a blind energy so being he becomes void non existent existence becomes non existence non being this is a way of saying being becomes non being a void conscious force conscious nations. force becomes nescience neither there is knowledge and it is a blind energy yeah and ecstasy took the figure of world being so we see again the triple mystic cross yeah. ecstasy takes the figure of world being in a mysterious 
dispensations law. Now you see the beauty of Sharbindo is, <laughs> you know, I, I just love this way of expression. He is revealing all the mystery. Still he uses the word mysterious. And it's very interesting because even after the mind has understood all, has it really understood? It's still a mystery. <laughs> it's still a mystery. <laughs> what would have been that moment when the being chose to plunge? If you really look at it that way, we don't really understand. But still all that we can say is that at some level we comprehend by the grace. At some level, you know, because of a drop of the truth, that light shines and does something. And yet it is a mystery. In a mysterious dispensation's law, a wisdom that prepares its far-off ends, planned so to start her slow, ionic game. Again, the story of Mahabharata. How this wisdom works? Birth of Krishna, the Godhead, born in a prison. Christ, the Savior, born in a manger, no? Yes. yes. Among the most ordinary common folk. In a stable. Stable. Those who have to deliver the Pandavas, the powerful instruments, they are born in a forest and questions are raised about them. Meager, slow start. And all these lines give us hope. So what if our start is slow? It is he who is the spur and he is carrying us. So this is how all things start. A blindfold search and wrestle and fumbling clasp of a half-seen nature and a hidden soul. We think we know nature. We don't know. Half-seen nature. And soul is completely hidden. This is how the game starts. Half-seen, we know, we see, or the, the animal world experiences only its small little instincts. A game of hide and seek in toilet rooms. A play of love and hate and fear and hope continues in the nursery of mind. It's hard and heavy romp of self-born twins. The self-born twins are the well-known dualities which he is just mentioning. All the dualities in fact. Love and hate, fear and hope and many all these dualities. Joy and sorrow. These are the self-born twins. In the nursery of the mind it continues. Hopefully not in the Graduation level of the mind. Nursery of mind is our primitive, you know, uh, mind which is full of these, which he will also describe. Physical mind, vital mind, even a rational mind. This is a nursery of the mind. The real mind stuff has not yet really manifested. So there it continues this game. At last, now he's continuing it. See the vision in one sweep. Where did we start from? The worm. Even before that. And where is he carrying us? What a flow. At last, the struggling energy can emerge and meet the voiceless being in wider fields. Then can they see and speak and breast to breast in a larger consciousness, a clearer light, the two embrace and strive and each know each regarding closer now the planet's face. Who are these two will meet? Nature and soul. The divine and his playmate, eternal playmate. They alone were playing in many forms. Hide and seek. <laughs> we just got caught, by the way. <laughs> they are the players, real players. We are the football. But we can choose to be conscious and become the player. And we can choose to be the conscious force in existence. That is the choice we can make. This is very nice. I am reminded of a little... Sufi mystic poem. So the poem goes, it's in you know Urdu, I'll say that and then the English translation because there's a flavor in it. So the poet, mystic poet is telling us humanity, Ji chahe to shisha banja, ji chahe paimana, shisha paimana kya banna, mai banja, mai khana banja. So it says, if you want, you can become glass. Glass is a material. Or you can become a cup made out of that glass. Or you can become the wine inside the glass, inside the beaker. Or you can become the storehouse where wine is distillery. <laughs> and then he says, or why you go through all this process? Forget yourself. 
and then become divana totally one with that ecstasy it's a very powerful poem and then you know just to complete that poem because since we are at it he says you can become the dust of the lord's feet and that dust the lord lifts up and puts in his eyes as surma you know that kajal and then he says that awaken in yourself so much fire why you want to burn and bask in other fires seek zaheen ke dil se jalna kahe ko har shamma pe jalna why you are looking for fire here and there apni aag mein khud jal jaye tu aisa parwana ban ja become such a being that you burn in the fire that burns within you <laughs> so why every time in the world contact basically the ego is looking for deliverance <laughs> in the wrestle and in the embrace with the world it's looking for deliverance when it is wrestle then after a while say no 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 i am not enjoying because it's losing the game in love it enjoys it but both case you lose the ego but why you want to do in this indirect way awaken that fire inside that the ego is burnt to ashes and the true being emerges so you know this whole thing somehow reminded me that at last they can see each other in a closer light and in a more intimate way the two embrace and strive and each know each regarding closer now the playmates face it's not that nature is bad or it's you know why i have got this nature no it's a game take this nature to the lord offer it to the lord that's what she wants ultimately she has come to us praying for deliverance we should not complain or we you don't know, turn away that's why mother says share your own burden of all that is anti divine mother's words yeah. powerful even in these formless coiling she could feel now you see he connects see this this trikal drishti he has told us the whole thing and putting us back on focus like in a cinema and then you zoom back and you show even in these formless coilings she could feel matters responds to an infant stir of soul formless coilings in this trickle this thing i must tell you that when you came before mother spontaneously immediately you knew that she saw the past Everything. the present yes. and the future yes there's so many examples of that oh. absolutely Shubhin the once even told someone when he said sir how do you know when he said oh you were baji rao and his brother who was a skeptic said sir how do you know because baji rao is right long back so shubhin the looked at him and then he said oh you are testing the divine <laughs> then he told how he is going to die <laughs> we are in the same place where baji rao had died and it actually happened and then this man called him and said you know what you remember what should been that said this hand many lives behind and in front so what a you know this word formless coilings somehow you know it's very interesting because normally coilings okay you will think of a serpent and you know worm but these are not formless coilings formless coiling only makes me think of some of the ribonucleic acid in the dna in the cell hmm. that is the first stir of formless which is taking a form of life so shobindo is carried because that's where he started the prokaryote life matters responds to an infant stir of soul in nature he saw the mighty spirit concealed watched the weak birth of a tremendous force pursued the riddle of godhead's tentative pace what a lovely line these sometimes you know these words you been the uses like a master artist at one place he uses the word in nature's instruments loiters secret, secret god. god i mean to use the word loiter and here he uses a very gentle word tentative not deliberate yeah. tentative gives the feeling that it's okay there is a certain degree of you know casualness involved even though there is thought in it ki okay i have to go there but let's lolling lolling is a body as used <laughs> each lolling is a pose it's not just a lolling so you know tentative pace heard the faint rhythms of a great unborn muse so this is the vision of the total 
picture and then he continues after this initial beginnings of life in matter then came a fierier breath of waking life and there arose from the dim gulf of things these strange creations of a thinking sense existence is half real and half dream so in the beginnings there is only perception jets of energy instincts that's it then comes thinking sense it's very interesting yeah. that there are something like a rudimentary mind but purely a sense mind mind which exists only by the sensations and it it, it continues in lot of people you know they cannot think unless it's something like there concretely sense is through the senses that thoughts arise not without the senses it's a very powerful mind a life was there that hope not to survive beings were born who perished without trace events that were a formless drama's limbs and actions driven by a blind creature will a seeking power found out its road to form patterns were built of love and joy and pain and symbol figures for the moods of life an insect hedonism fluttered and crawled various moods of life and then look insect hedonism i mean <laughs> hedonism of course there are big philosophies of hedonism and generally it's it's bad enough so <laughs> they <then> to <laughs> include the adjective shivinder is using what an adjective almost like the insect hedonism yeah i mean he almost reverses the whole thing and makes it appear really uh, really what really is behind this whole philosophy of hedonism that we are here to have joy Well, insects are also here to have joy. <laughs> <That kind. laughs> I mean, if we really call it really joy, insect hedonism, <clears throat> and vast in a sunlit nature, surface thrills and dragon raptures, python agonies, crawled in the marsh and mire and licked the sun. Again, see the expression. How do they lick the sun? The sun is there in the mud. the light of the sun falls in the mud they can't even lift their eyes to the sun so they lick the sun and you know it it reminds me sometimes you know people you know in newspaper casually something people write you know about shurbindo and or anyone you know, something beautiful so at one point you wonder that you know really it's it's too cheap a place it's not worth you know <laughs> uh and eventually these newspapers you know what happens to them they go and people use them for uh, you know all kinds of things but even there the lot can still work you know how amal kiran got to know about shurbindo because yeah. there shoes. was a rapper yeah. shoes were wrapped in a newspaper in which he read about shurbindo and the mother yeah. and the ashram and incidentally not good things <laughs> and that attracted him <laughs> typical amal kirat yeah <laughs> <laughs> that attracted him oh if this is the ashram i must go and see yeah. so you know this you will also see sometimes as you walk through that you know sometimes on the pavements people will be selling mother shobindo's pictures put yeah. pelmel and they are all lying there sometimes you wish you know people could go inside their nice places lovely pictures are there and they are lying there but you know what there is a there are people who would pick up from there you just can't and it's the same light so very often I, i you know when i see it i just think that just as the divine has chosen to become mud and matter he has chosen to be you know <laughs> on the payment in all these little photographs so that's how in the early consciousness it responds to that so licked the sun it can't yet see the sun or live the eyes doesn't know about sun still it draws something from that energy of the sun and it's okay so that justifies it huge armored strength shook a frail quaking ground great puza creatures with a dwarfish brain and pygmy tribes imposed their small life drift so the dinosaurs have come yeah. and the pygmy tribes we know the yeah. pygmies the small humanity it's not small probably in size and stature it's small within its brain the cranium it is not yet developed 
in a dwarf model of humanity. Nature now launches the extreme experience. So here he also is not condemning. He looks upon the pygmy tribe says nature's extreme experience launching. It's a launching pad. Like you know you have those space satellites launched from a base. So the pygmy tribes were the launching base for the for nature to carry her extreme experience. What is that extreme experience of Godhead in matter? This pygmy tribe will evolve into what Neanderthal and <laughs> you know Cro Magnon has gone and Homo sapiens erectus and Homo intellectualis and Homo psychicus. <laughs> Shubh in those words, not mine. He uses that, you know, when Dilip Kumar Roy spoke about the intellect and all. He said, why do you assume that Homo intellectualis, intellectualis, maybe he will be wider, but Homo psychicus will be deeper and have a more sweetness and profoundness. So he, he has given these names. Homo intellectualis, those who approach through the mind. And Homo psychicus, those who approach through the deeper heart. These are the two species which fight with each other like the Cro-Magnon and the Neanderthals. <laughs> but they are passing species. What will eventually come is Homo Supramentalicus. <laughs> that he has not said. <laughs> These are, this is my word. But you know, they, they, that's how it goes. Cro-Magnon man and the Neanderthal fought. It doesn't matter who defeated whom. Eventually this is the humanity and both are gone. <laughs> so, this is the experience and master point of a design's caprice. All this looked like a caprice and what it has created? Man. Thinking man. Luminous result of her half-conscious climb on rungs twixt her sublimities and grotesques to massive from infinitesimal shapes to a subtle balancing of body and soul to an order of intelligent littleness. Again, we see how beautiful. Intelligent littleness. All this nature has done. Then we can read the last few lines. Around him, in the moment beats of time, the kingdom of the animal self arose, where deed is all and mind is still half born. How do we define an animal? We have in biology. But animal state also lingers in man. Unthinking humanity is closer to the animal kind. Deed is all. And even when we look at people only by the external, where deed is all and not the thought. So this continues. Because at the animal world there is no thought. Deed. And it's natural for the animal world. But for man, the station is thought. Reason. But for an animal world, it's unthinking. Where deed is all and mind is still half born. They have a mind but half born. And the heart obeys a dumb unseen control. The force that works by the light of ignorance. Her animal experiment began. Look at it. Light of ignorance. Mm. Ignorance is not an absence of light. That is nescience. Ignorance is half light, half darkness. It's the grey zone between the black and the white. So this grey zone is ignorance. Completely, seemingly, of course there is no state where there is no knowledge, but a state where you ex can experience it like that is the inconscient. But ignorance is the first awakening of the inconscient to light. Crowding with conscious creatures, her world scheme, but to the outward only where they are alive. Now see how beautifully mm. conscious we say, oh I am conscious. Conscious of what? Only to the outward they were alive. Of course, later animals become aware of inner being. But in the beginning, animals are alive only to the outward. Only they reply to touches and surfaces and to the prick of need that drove their lives. A body that knew not its own soul within. There lived and longed at wrath and joy and grief. This is the animal life he is describing from a spiritual point of view. We could have stopped here, but we just take five, six lines because we'll end this movement yeah. and something new will start. 
A mind was there that met the objective world as if a stranger or enemy at its door. You see extreme paranoias where people begin to become afraid, suspicious of everybody. This is from the regression to an animal past. Animals will, you know, the dog will bark at any unfamiliar sound. The snake will hiss. You may be a great person. Your identity card has no validity there. It will still hiss and bite you if you go near or press on the tail. So it is like at everything that is strange. And, you know, unfortunately, this state lingers even in the human being. <clears throat> Its thoughts were needed by the shocks of sense. All that it sees, hears, by that it thinks. Need. Shocks. Needed. 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 Its early mind, the sense mind, wakes up in the animal world. That's why they say very interestingly that cobras, it's very interesting these, these myths or, you know, these so-called superstition, they carry a truth inside that if you kill a snake, the female snake, cobra, if you kill a male cobra, the female cobra captures your photograph and then will trace you wherever you are and will find you and kill you. Now, you know, obviously, <laughs> it's too much of a story to, <laughs> to believe. But there is a truth in it. How does an animal know and trace you? One, it just captures, like a sense mind. It speaks about the sense mind in an animal world. That's all it knows. And through that sense mind and whatever that image, it has an instinct which traces you. Police can't trace you. Scotland Yard police will find it difficult, but she can trace you. Now, this is purely a sense mind, which I'm not saying whether this is true or not. I really don't know. And I think it's not true. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> well, <laughs> it would be fine if it is true. People, the way, you know, they destroy life forms and kill even Indian cobras and all like that. But the point is that the animals have only a sense mind and that sense mind awakens what can be called as spurts of thoughts, spurts of thoughts, memories. That's all it has. It's, it captured not the spirit in the form. It entered not the heart of what it saw. It looked not for the power behind the act. So, it, you know, animal mind doesn't see intent and what was really happening inside, just sees the external. It studied not the hidden motive in things. Nor strove, the find, nor strove to find the meaning of it all. This is the difference between animals and man. It has nothing to do with the number of feet and horns and tail and what you eat and don't eat. It has to do simply with people who are driven by the sense mind for whom deed is all. And based on that, they form all kinds of opinions and views who are frightened at every strange contact that, you know, let me back off this, <laughs> whatever... So they try to move in that kind of a close group, uh, mostly a small little family or something connected because they are afraid. Everything else is like a stranger, like animals. They move in herds. You know, it's a herd instinct. See across Tanzania, thousands and thousands of zebras crossing together. It's a massive show of strength, like political parties. When I see them, I think of the political parties in India back home. It's very much the same. So otherwise, if they go alone, the lions call the average human being will tear them away because they do such chaotic things. But when they are in like that, like zebras, so even the lions get intimidated and they are, you know, quietly hiding behind the bush for their chance. So this is how we have the animals with the herd instinct living and everything else is strange to be afraid of, to be suspicious of. So this is the animal world which doesn't go to read what is the intent inside. What is the deeper sense of things? Is there a meaning in life or not? This is not given to unthinking man. So we'll stop here and continue on Thursday.